Greasy, the intro. Oh, y'all welcome back to another episode of Greasy Goo Raw. I don't know what episode it is. It's one of them. It's five or six, seven, I don't know, four, something like that. Anyway, they're working on the Brookville Roadster body. Didn't invite me, and by the way. But y'all stay tuned because we got something cool coming. Welcome back to another episode of Greasy's Garage. I guess y'all got to introduce to Greasy if you never met Greasy. That's that's a good old boy. He thinks he knows everything, doesn't know nothing, right? Let's get you caught up on Bravo Six here. We've got the front end mounted. We do not have the hairpins uh, all the way up, but the front end is mounted with disc brakes. That's all mocked up, fitting beautifully. I'm very happy with that. It's uh, very sexy, and uh, Sean got to learn a lot with that. So. In this episode, we're gonna be putting the rear, uh, rear end under it. As you can see, I've already started boxing in right here and uh, tack welding that all in. I tack welded that with my little 110. Um, I can't get the 220 in here. <laughs> it's down at the other shop, uh, the other shop down at the bottom of the hill, so I can't get the 220 up here. So we got this one little 110 that I just kind of set up. It's made by Yes Welder. It's a pretty good little welder. I, I, it actually does really well, but I wanna burn this in with the 220. Uh, so anyway, got these boxing plates here. This came with the, 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 the frame itself. They're supposed to run the whole length, but we've got this center bar right here. And if this has not been, this was put on a jig and made, and it was square when it was made. This is the heart. This is your, the uh, center of the whole frame. If you remove this right now without it being boxed in, without the transmission cross member in, you're going to lose your squareness. You're going to lose. Uh, so some people will say you will. Some people will say you won't. I'm telling you from in my experience with these and with mod model A frames is even worse. If you cut that center section out before you are got everything else tied in, that thing will start doing this and going crazy on you. So we're leaving that in. The reason why I'm telling you that is because these boxing plates is a one piece. So I've had to cut them as you can see here and cut them for where the uh, 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 coilover cross member goes to. So I've had to put that in there. So I'm just kind of giving that a uh, lick and a promise, making sure it doesn't go anywhere and stay. And that's gonna be the next thing. Now the reason why you have to do this first is because we're gonna put a triangulated four link rear in it. This is, this goes on the rear end, okay? That will go, well, the rear end, it'll go like this. This is where your rear shock mount is, this is where your, your bottom shock mount. This is where your, goes in like this. That runs up to the frame. And then if you've never seen a triangulated four link, what happens, and I'll show you on this rear end so that you can see where we're going with all this. We're gonna put these bars here out to the frame. So those bars will go there like that. So it creates a triangle. So that's hence the name triangulated four link. If you've not ever done that. I get these off of a guy on eBay. I gotta tell you, I can't even remember their name. If you're interested, just comment below. If you're interested in where I got these from, just comment below and I'll, 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 I'll give you the link. Um, I get these where they're right-handed and left-handed threads. That's why you see the, this nut here so that you can turn it. Trust me, when you're adjusting the rear end, you're gonna to try to set this at about a three degree uh, pinion angle. But when you can do this, you don't have to unbolt these every time and turn these out and guess. It's turn it and you can be more precise. So I get them right-handed and left-handed threaded. In that link, when I send it, if you want it, just comment below, I'll send it to you. But you have to email them or message them through eBay that you want that to, to be right-handed, left-handed threads. They do charge an extra 50 bucks for that service. Trust me, I would, I would pay double that because of how easy it is to be able to move that rear end around. We're gonna get this thing centered as, as centered as can be. We'll measure it 50 times. Uh, another trick you're gonna learn in this video is I brought my laser up. So I can put a laser across this and I can set that rear end. I can set that laser up and then put that rear end perfectly square in there. So, and then we'll, we'll still do all the measurements and I'll show you all that. So stay tuned, keep, 
keep watching stay to the end so you can see how this all comes in remember go down and hit that like and subscribe we do appreciate that that really helps the channel out a lot not only are you helping the channels but you're helping the veterans that we do around that we help around here in the shop that you all don't get to see on camera a lot because they're kind of shy they don't like to be on camera but we try to hire homeless veterans disabled veterans bring them in the shop teach them to weld do that kind of stuff it really helps us with that because we're trying to get monetized so go down and hit them buttons all right so you know that we've got this we don't have the bottom loaded and we've got the top loaded in here on this uh, part over here so just a long tack welded with a little 110 welder here's the thing now you can go buy sheet metal and do all this yourself but this kit came with these tabs and those tabs the idea is is this is, should set just inside or in the bottom and those tabs should hold it from being able to be pushed in um, and it worked up here pretty good uh, along this all the way up here to up here and then the bottom kind of folded in a little bit on me not a big deal you can still make that work so let me show you these it's really simple I, remember i had to cut this short because of this cross member so put these in and then i'll show you how that tab now is the is boxing it in just really just to, like stiff in the frame or is there any other purpose it, it is to stiff in the frame but also we have to have this one boxed in because i have to mount those brackets to here oh okay you know i could mount them to the inside of the frame i could and, and let me say this too if you had an original 32 frame they had a flathead v8 in them okay and so that thing was only anywhere from 60 to 100 horsepower you know at the most not even 100 then in 32 so maybe 80 okay so these these, these frames didn't get twisted up anymore and, and to be honest with you, we're only putting a, a kind of a stock 302 in this anyway, and it really probably shouldn't need it, wouldn't need it, but I'd rather do it now and be safe than not. Because there's a lot of frames out there that are built just like this on the, from the factory that's never boxed in. But we do, we're gonna box it in because we have them, we came with it, and I do need places to weld to and mount to. All right. That, that's going to start a debate in the comment section, by the way. Always, always, everybody, say, everybody will say, oh, everybody, you have to, you have to box them in. I'm going to say not really. All right, so let's get this dude down. All right. You going to stop taping and I'll help you? No. Oh, okay. No. That's the nice thing about those tabs. That's what they're for. All right. And then you can just give it a little tappy tap. There you go. See that tab? Just hold it right in. Mm -hmm. And you can give them a close up of this when I get this. Oh, that one folded in, so it needs a little bit more tap. Super loud, right? <laughs> oh, I'm sure it's probably too loud. Yeah, I'm gonna move that up a little bit and then reclamp this. There, you can see that tab, and that allowed that to move inside. Mm -hmm. Done the same thing on the bottom, right there. And we can check out the front. The front needs a little bit up. So we're gonna get that a little up. There we go. Beautiful. All right. Here we go. Here's this one. Oh, yeah, thanks. Cameraman and tool helper. You see, look how tight that allowed that to get. Now I'll move that um, clamp as we go up. Right, okay. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I think I'm gonna start here and put a, put a couple of tacks 
because I do have to move this end up just a little bit. So I'm going to get this set to where it won't move on me anymore. Okay. And then I will, I'll just bring this back. It just needs to come up just a skosh. So I'll just put a tack here and then kind of undo those. Okay, so I started welding and just realized I didn't take the epoxy primer off. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna try to get it tacked in a little bit and then try to go in and hit it with a flat wheel and try to get some of that off. I just realized that I didn't take that off and you really should. Um, I could burn it and burn it off, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try to get try to get it knocked off so that it'll burn through because that one didn't burn, that didn't burn in as well as I'd like because of it. So I'll get a few more tacks on it and then um, uh, then I'll hit that in the flat wheel. So remember when you're recording a YouTube video to uh, not get distracted. Yeah. <laughs> worrying more about setting up the shot. Yeah, than... exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's good. So, that's good training though. You know it, I mean? it is. Yeah, it's good. Good thought. But you did that on purpose. This, you know, oh yeah, we did. To do it yourself. Did, so yeah. you know. Yeah. All right. So let me get a few more tacks on this, and then I'll get it. To, I'll get it cleaned up. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, it's not New Year's yet, so it's not 2025, but it's not Christmas. So we're in between those two holidays right now. So took a little time off. So we're a little late in getting this video out, but uh, I did some tinkering around uh, with the uh, 32 frame while we were on the Christmas break vacation. So I could try to get this thing a roller and congratulations, we have a roller. So, um, we didn't go through the whole step-by-step -step process of this triangulated four link back here. Um, my advice to you, if you're doing a triangulated four link, is don't try to shoot a YouTube video in the middle of it because there's so much thought went into this and so much planning that it was just like days and days of just tinkering and experimenting until we got it right. But I'll, I'll go over that back there with you in a little bit. But we got the front end, we've got the hairpin uh, rear mounts on here there are nice and welded in so a little tip for you put your whole front end together and then I took a ratchet strap which is laying around here somewhere and I tried to pull this axle up a little bit so that I could get that about what I thought was right height or not right height but the right weight on it we set the uh, what you can do is you take your tire size that you're going to run Take the, the, the overall height, divide that by two, and then measure it out right here. It's just showing right here. I don't have the pin in here, but if you go to the bottom of that hole, that is the center of your axle. The bottom of this hole where, where your um, keeper goes in. That's, so you measure that out. So we got this frame all at right height, measured it out. I pulled that up to where I thought the, enough weight was on it, and then measured out and set the hairpins so that I could have seven five to seven degrees of caster that's where i wanted to be that window because it's not going to be exact until you actually get it completely put together but if at five to seven you're talking about one turn on these things will move it a degree so you're you're talking about moving it just one turn here and there to try to dial that in so we're in that window now that's how i like to do it so you want your caster between five and seven some lights like seven some guys like four. It's a personal preference to be honest with you, but I try to be between five and seven, but whatever it is on one side, I want it on the other, okay? So you want them to be equal. Right now, without anything setting on this, no matter where I put the, uh, uh, the dial, what's it called? I've lost my mind. Boop, 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 boop. The digital dial indicator. That's what we're gonna call it. <laughs> All right, no matter where I put that at, I'm at 5.4 degrees. So I, I know I've got that thing in there centered, and I know that I have it 
uh, within my window so that I can adjust. And if I put a little weight on that, that changes to about 6.8. So I think we're gonna be good. Um, the rear end, so we triangulated it. When you look at these bodies or these frames, you're gonna see an X frame in, in these that the transmission will go to. So what I decided to do was take the bottom bar and I built out some two by three square tubing right here. And I'm still going to, I'm still going to gusset this, that this will still get gusseted. So don't think it's complete yet, but I built this out. And then now what I'll do is I'll come off of this and then I will start to build that X frame off of it. So this is not complete, but it'll hold. It's holding where it's at and when I gusset it in. Uh, the top bars, if you don't know what a triangulated four link does, these right here, okay. They keep the rear end from moving side to side. That's what, that's what they're for. It's basically a panel bar, but it's triangulated four leg because you don't have four bars out here. You only have one on each side too. Uh, our, right, our shocks are 10 inch right height, 12 extended, and uh, um, uh, I'm sorry, they're 10 inch right height, eye to eye, and they are 12 extended, eight compressed. No, I've got that wrong. They are 12 inch right height, 14 extended, 10 compressed. There we go. So, and we are using a 225 pound spring. And if you'll notice this angle of the shocks here, they are a little bit steeper than I like. Not, they're not, they're not, there's nothing wrong. They're just a little bit steeper than I like. So I went to a 225 pound spring because the more angle, the more angle you give those, the more spring you need. If they were straight up down, you may need a 175 pound spring. But as you go and milk, tilt, tilt, tilt. So we're starting with a 225. Uh, 10 inch spring, 225. That's where we'll start. And it's looking pretty good. So I'm liking it. Uh, and we are in the top hole of the back bracket. So you can even, you can adjust right height that as well. So if you'll notice, we're in the top holes. You can, you got two more holes you could do so those down. Uh, take those down. So, rear ends in, front ends in. We are now a roller, and that was the goal of this video. So, there you have it. John, you got any questions? Can you put the body on it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect segue into the next video. <laughs> hey guys, y'all stick around. Next video, um, we're going to be putting the body on this. So, make sure you hit that subscribe and all notification bell because the next video, the body will be on this thing and uh, then Sean will be crying like a little girl, <laughs> you know, uh, so happy. All right, so appreciate you, love you, God bless you. Now go do your marriage.